This video covers the configuration of flow sensing using the ESP LXME2 Pro. The LXME2 Pro requires two components to add flow sensing. The first component is the ProSmart module. This module comes pre-installed with the LXME2 Pro, or it can be purchased separately to replace the base module. The model number is PSM-LXME2. ProSmart modules are designed to be used with Rainbird FS series and ultrasonic series flow sensors. This is the UFS200, which is a 2-inch ultrasonic flow sensor. It has two wires coming out, one red and one black. The red wire goes to the red terminal, and the black wire goes to the gray terminal. Please note that the shielded cable is required. Shielding prevents the flow sensor from picking up and creating false pulses in the Pro Smart module from other wires that may be in the ground, including station wires, master valve wires, or power lines for other equipment. Flow sensing on the LXME2 Pro can be configured in either the setup or flow sensor dial positions. We'll do it via flow sensor. First, we need to set up the flow sensor. We'll use the plus and minus keys to cycle through the options. If the model number of the flow sensor we're using was listed here, we could select it. In this case, we're going to use a custom K-factor, an offset for this flow sensor. The K-factor and offset information can be found in the flow sensor's user manual. This looks good, so we'll press done. The next step is to set up our flow rates. This can be done automatically through Learn Flow, or it can be sent manually through Set Station Rates. Since we already have a flow sensor set up, we're going to use the Learn Flow function. Select Next twice. It says Learn Flow will only work for stations that are set up correctly. We need to have a station runtime and a priority set, and we need to have an assigned master valve. Learn Flow will run through each station and measure the actual flow through that station, and then save it for each station. Press Next. We can now set an optional delay. In this case, we want the Learn Flow to start immediately. Select Next. It warns us that Learn Flow will override any existing Learn Flow rates, including flow rates entered manually. Press Start and Learn Flow is complete. Let's go back a couple of screens. The next step is to set up Flow Manager. Flow Manager is used to optimize water windows using the set flow rates and simul stations. First, we need to turn Flow Manager on. Select Done. Next, we need to set up our simul stations, which are stations that run at the same time. Turn the dial to setup Go to Advanced Station Settings, go to Simul Stations, and then we'll set Simul Stations to the highest number that our system can handle. In this case, we have a maximum of five, so we'll set five Global Simul Stations and five Program Max Simul Stations. Press Done. Flow Manager is now set up correctly. Next, we'll set up Flow Watch. Flow Watch executes user-defined rules based on high and low flow rates. First, we'll turn on Flow Watch. Next, we'll set the flow limits, starting with the high flow settings. The default is 130% of normal flow rate. The settling time defaults to three minutes, which means the flow condition needs to exist for three minutes before any action is taken. We'll leave that at three minutes and select Next. Now we're going to set the low flow settings. The default setting is 70%, or 30% below the normal flow rate. Again, the settling time is set to three minutes. Select Done. Next, we're going to set the flow actions. Diagnose and Eliminate is the default. When it detects a low or high flow on a station, it will first test that station and then turn off that station and continue running the other stations. We can set it to shut down an alarm. 
which shuts down the whole system and sets an alarm. Or we can set it to alarm only. So we'll run the irrigation as scheduled, but it's going to show an alarm here. We'll set it to diagnose and eliminate. We're also going to set the re-enable time so that once a condition is tripped, all the irrigation shuts down and once it's diagnosed, the remaining stations are going to start up again. We'll set it for 10 minutes and select done. So if we do end up with a flow alarm, the alarm light is going to come on. Note that the alarms will clear automatically after the designated re-enable time. There are two places to see the alarm notification. In the auto dial position, it'll show an alarm here. You can also see the alarms in the alarms history dial position. If we go into the flow alarms, you can see all of the station flow alarms and flow zone alarms. Once the problem is resolved, we can select clear flow alarms to clear all the alarms and reset the system.